Hello there Retro fans, this is Retro Marky. It's been a while since I made a video but uh, I'm making one now. So what I thought I'd do is I've been working on um, optimising some of my Acorn computers recently and this is one of them, this is my BBC Master which is more or less done. I might consider possibly adding a data centre at some point and doing a video about that but uh, for today um, I'm just going to show you what I've done so if we pop the old lid of Rooney off which is Italian for lid small lid and have a quick gander I'm just going to pop on some extra lighting there we go and so what we've got here is a I've actually put my Raspberry Pi co-processors uh, internally into the master which is a lot better than it dangling around out the back so that's one thing I've done I've also you've probably seen a video before but we've got our switch here which gives us multiple operating systems through this device here now both of these are from Retro Clinic and uh, I'm highly recommended now another thing I wanted to show you I've also got an SD card solution for both my beeps including this one and this one was a little bit fiddly uh, when it came to using the SD card because basically it doesn't really matter about the coprocessor although I might turn it off just for now Oops. like so so what happens even without the coprocessor we've still got the Acorn DFS and if I do a shift break or something like if we try and go to the card itself although it goes to the card and it's physically working we're not getting much in fact we can't load anything at all despite the fact it does recognize disk images but it doesn't read anything now the solution to this is to hold S when you press break if you've got Smart Spy like me. I don't know about the Turbo MMC or the other solution, but on the Smart Spy uh, EEPROM, then this works just fine. I can now do a DCAT, and there's our games, for example. So you might have seen on some of my other videos a couple of homebrew games. So that's rather nice. I recommend anything by Tricky, especially this one. Now this one uses speech, um, but not using any kind of speech enhancements. That's purely that's purely from using sideways RAM banks. I don't know what happens without sideways RAM. I presume there's no speech. Um, but uh, talking about speech, we'll uh, go and have a look at my. <laughs> we'll go and have a look at my beep in a second because that's pretty much done, and also a nice little acorn electron treat. So I will cut now and back to you in a second. And we're back with the BBC Micro. This is a standard micro with a few bells and whistles, as you can probably see there. But we'll have a look inside. Lidaruni off. So <laughs> it's quite busy in here, as you can hopefully see. So this one also has an MMC solution with a Smart Spy ROM as well. Uh, here, this is 32k of Shadow RAM. Now, Shadow RAM is something that compensates for the fact that the Beeb uses a lot of. RAM especially in certain graphics modes so what that actually does is give you the full 28 and a half K whatever it is more or less in every single graphics mode so basically you're never going to lose any memory by switching modes and that's useful for things like view and view sheet uh, so you don't lose any of the, the RAM available for that not something I'd say is necessary and it does cause 
quite a few compatibility option uh, difficulties so to be honest I don't really recommend it I just like um, seeing what I can do with a with a machine basically now to get this working it actually plugs into the CPU socket and then the CPU plugs into that plus also over here you need a ROM as well to provide the firmware and um, if we have a look at the ROMs if I can zoom out to get there we go you'll see Shadow RAM OS 2.4 uh, Shadow RAM I think can also be used as a printer buffer but that's not something I'm really that concerned with. Other things on this machine are a Watford Electronics DDFS which is a double, uh, double density 80 track compatible. Uh, I do have a real floppy drive as well and ACP I kind of like. Um, not sure why I can't boot to it at the moment. Oh, we can. This gives us sort of like a very primitive kind of wind, not Windows, but um, almost like a, I don't know, DOS sort of. I don't even know what you call it, but it gives you access to things like ROMs. You can decide what drive to boot to, things like that. Um, it's fairly handy, a bit more handy probably on the master, which has got a battery backup. Um, problem with this is it hasn't. Anyway, if we now do a boot like that, we can also confirm that yes, yet again, uh, the, the SD card is accessible. Uh, another thing is, so next to this shadow RAM, which is here, We've also got here a double dent, that's the DDFS, and we've got speech chips in there as well. Um, that was mainly after watching Gadget UK's video, I don't mind admitting, and hearing his Star Wars samples, I thought that's something I've got experience on real hardware. Now the ROM itself I mentioned is also in a ROM and RAM, this is sideways RAM and sideways ROM expansion board. Um, which means you can load extra software such as the advanced control panel that I showed you and all sorts of things into here. It's got uh, also um, a kind of disk drive em emulation through RAM which is very fast and you can also add more ROMs onto there. Not sure what ROMs I've got in here at the moment. Um, I've got machine code monitor, the control panel, DDFS, Smart Spy and the Shadow RAM ROM here. Um, with that, with sideways RAM, I can also load from floppy disk a bunch of ROMs as are needed. Try and get some. Damn camera won't focus. Anyway, go on focus. So, what I'd really like to do, finish off the this part, is. Um, show you the speech which is very cool indeed uh, now I did get this from Gadget UK and his video is probably a lot better than this one but um, I just want an excuse I love this it's I was a big fan of the Atari coin ops as a kid and um, this gives me no end of pleasure which is what retro computing is all about here we go. So again, thanks to Gadget UK for the files, and check out his video on the um, on the bead repairs and uh, installing the speech chips if you want more details. But uh, I'll leave you here with this. I'd also like to 
quickly show you the Jedi samples because that was one of my favourite games even though I liked all the Star Wars games Return of the Jedi was well just a bit of a it's got a place in my heart shall we say uh, if I can find the disc that is Okie dokie. So that's pretty much what I wanted to show you. That's my BBC Micro, which I'm very happy with, with the combination of sideways RAM, ROM, shadow RAM, speech, um, SD card solution, real floppy drive. I am extremely happy with this machine. Pretty much I can fiddle about with uh, all the things that I grew up and still read about in, uh, in magazines. Uh, at the moment. So anyway, what I'll do now is um, shift over to the Acorn Electron, and then um, we can end this video, and you can uh, you can move on to another one. So if you had an Acorn Electron back in the day, you'd realise that as great as they were, and they really were, they only had one expansion port, unlike the plethora of ports on the BBC Micro. Now, Acorn released one of these devices called a plus one which plugs into the expansion port and that gives you not one but two cartridge slots an analog digital uh, analog joystick port and centronics printer port so little by little as Acorn Electron owners did get a little bit closer to our Beeb counterparts um, in the latter days of the Electron devices were released not by Acorn but by third parties that gave us uh, mode 7 uh, three channel sound user support access, uh, 1 megahertz bus and tube I believe, also floppy drives. So this thing was pretty much an essential. Um, there were a couple of gadgets that um, were sort of clones of this that had uh, also sideways ROM and RAM like I mentioned before. So if we look on the screen here we've got Expansion 1.0 ADC, that's the analog to digital converter, printer and RS423. So what did this do? Well, it enabled us to use cartridges like these, for example. And these cartridges could give us spreadsheets, word processors, and even games such as these three here snapper hopper countdown to doom and a couple of others now already you can see having a pile of cartridges like that is probably not um, ideal especially in the modern world when we've got sd cards for the beeb and flash cards for the commodore 64 etc uh, etc et a solution though has come along for mere 30 pounds more or less including postage which um, you can't buy in the shops but if you look at the star.org forums for the mostly for the Beeb you will find you can order one of these Mega Games cartridges and what that does is give us all of those cartridges and a lot lot more so simply plug it in and turn on Ah, that's right, you have to hit shift and break. My apologies. So you can use it in either slot. 
and there we go we've got a menu here uh, we can which can be customizable you can do alphabetically so there's a we can do I'll use this for a while scroll down and go through like this oh here we go four games by genre so we've got adventure, text graphics, etc. Arcade games. And also what I really like, which is probably the deal breaker for me, in utilities, we've got Advanced Disk Toolkit, which is a sideways RAM. That's uh, a sideways ROM. Um, we've got ARM and ACP, basic editor, ALK man. So it can also uh, be used for more than just games. So just go back here again. Also, under applications, I've got Fourth Lisp Logo Pascal Star Word View and View Spell, which were the two cartridges I showed you, and even some View Professional versions and View Store and View Sheet. So basically, I've got the entire suite of View. But you don't want to see that. You want to see the games. Uh, let's have a look at games by publisher. Let's have a look. Choose letter between so S for Superior Soft. There we go. There's all the Superior Soft games. Um, I don't know. As you can see, it's very very quick to load. So it's not instant like a Commodore 64 cartridge, but um, it's pretty damn quick. So if we hit shift and break, go back to the menu, Let's have a look by genre. I don't know. Traditional games? I wonder what that is. I wonder what, well let's see, so actually for example I'd like to find Repton, let's go by Publisher Superior Soft, press down there we go, Repton 3 for example so as you can see it's nice and quick there we go So that's that cartridge, as I said, uh, just over £30. Um, now the only thing I have to do is order it and ask for a spreadsheet or he will send you a spreadsheet and you can choose what games to have on there. Now there's a lot on here, I can't remember how many. Um, but there's so many that basically what I did was choose the ones I didn't want as opposed to the ones I did want because so that's a I'm done that quite right but um, oh next page there we go so as you can see there's a lot pretty much the same or even bigger than the BBC SD card Malarkey. Oh, you couldn't even see that, but uh, believe me, there, yeah, no, I'm just scrolling through various screens. So, yeah. Oh, here we go. Number of games 150. So, yeah, what you'll probably want to do is just choose the ones you don't want. Okay, well, that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you today.